Welcome back, Parasites, to another origin story from the Spider-Verse. Hey, fellas. Recently, we visited a potential future with our origin of Spider-Man 2099. Then we went to a parallel present to meet Spider-Gwen. Links to those videos down below. But now it's time to head to an alternate past, to the 1930s of Earth 90214, where a young man named Peter Benjamin Parker gets bit by a mystical spider tethered to a spider god, works for Daily Bugle star photographer Ben Urich, and battles Norman the Goblin Osborne in the Vulture, seeking revenge for the death of his Uncle Ben. Strap in, true believers, for this is a spider tale that is not for the faint of heart. Editor's note, Spider-Man Noir was created by this quartet of wise guys in the pages of Spider-Man Noir No. 1, which released in February 2009. The story begins in New York City during the Great Depression. Uncle Ben has been murdered, leaving Peter to help his Aunt May run a homeless shelter. He wants to go to school to learn about science, but can't afford it. And Peter isn't the only one who lost someone they love or struggles to make ends meet. New York is hurting. Shanty towns are built and the downtrodden have lost hope. Aunt May tries to rally her fellow New Yorkers, but with mobsters like Norman the Goblin Osborne in power, calls to action aren't heard for long. One night while giving a speech, Aunt May and Peter are attacked by Osborne's muscle, the Enforcers, Ox, Montana, and Fancy Dan. Peter stands up for his aunt, but it's not enough. This Peter Parker has yet to get his spider powers. Ben Urich, a photographer for the Daily Bugle, steps in to help, using his status as a shield to keep May and Peter safe. For now. Why did Ben Urich, a man with connections throughout the city, who secretly struggles with drug addiction and has nearly given up on morals, intervene and save the lives of Peter and his aunt? Short answer? Peter reminded Ben of his youth. Ben was just like Peter, idealistic and selfless, with an urge to always do what's right. Somewhere along the way, Ben Urich lost all that. The world beat him up too much, made him cynical and hopeless. Or so he thought. Maybe he felt he owed Peter something. The truth, perhaps. Ben Urich took Peter under his wing. Peter was hired by J. Jonah Jameson to be Ben's assistant on a special assignment. As Jameson said, Peter losing his uncle is one of thousands of sob stories in the city. Ben and Peter's job is to find other stories like Peter's for the Daily Beagle. For weeks, Ben and Peter do their job, and Ben saw the fire in Peter grow with each tragedy they reported on. Most of those tragedies were caused by Norman Osborne, the Goblin, and his gang of circus freaks that included his three enforcers, along with animal trainer Craven the Hunter, Craven's half-brother, the mysterious Chameleon, and the geek turned cannibal, the Vulture. Wanting to show Peter just how much power Osborne and his freaks had over New York City, Ben Urich brought Peter to speakeasies like the Black Cat Nightclub. Owned by Felicia Hardy, the only woman Ben Urich ever loved and who denied his hand in marriage, Peter saw just how right people like his Aunt May and Uncle Ben were about politicians and the people in power of his city. Like Aunt May, Uncle Ben was very vocal about his feelings towards people in power. His Uncle Ben said that politicians had a responsibility to the citizens of New York City to do better and be better. And as Peter looked around the speakeasy, seeing all the corruption, he realized his aunt and uncle's cries for a better New York felt impossible. That's when Peter's eyes caught Norman Osborne and his crew entering the speakeasy. Ben Urich brought Peter here to stomp out the flame in the kid's belly, but all Ben did was add coal to Peter's fire. Peter throws a drink in Norman Osborne's face and screams at him and the corrupt politicians that things will change, that power will shift to someone more responsible. And now, looking into the eyes of Norman Osborne, Peter knew that it was the goblin's infectious evil that caused the death of his Uncle Ben. Norman calms the room and tells Yurik to leave with the boy. Yurik takes Peter to a nearby cafe to calm him down, but instead Peter opens up and tells Yurik about the night his Uncle Ben died. Peter was the one who found Uncle Ben's body, torn to shreds. The police said it was wild dogs, but Uncle Ben died in a decrepit basement with lacerations from ropes around his wrists. Peter knew in his gut that his uncle was murdered. His uncle was a good man, who fought for his country as a pilot in the Great War, who stood up for the little guy and became a social activist with the love of his life in hopes of making their country a better place for their nephew. And for that, he was killed. After hearing all of the heartbreaking stories from hundreds of New Yorkers for the past few weeks with Ben Urich, with each story pointing to Osborne being responsible, Peter was now sure that Osborne had a hand in his uncle's death. Little did Peter know how right he was. For you see, Ben Urich knew the truth. Ben Urich was there the night Ben Parker died. Ben Urich watched it all happen. He watched as Ben Parker was tied up, beaten, and fed to the vulture. Urich was there because he too works for the goblin. It's a secret Urich keeps from Peter, but not for long. Sometimes I let matches burn down to my fingertips just to feel something, anything. Oh. A few days pass and Peter stops by Urich's place to let him know that their latest story made the evening edition. To his disgust, Peter arrives to find Urich high as a kite, alive but barely functioning, 
the needle still stuck in his arm. Peter's anger boils, but before he can scream his judgments at Yurik, the phone rings. Peter answers, getting a tip about the goblin importing something important down at the docks. It was a tip from one of Yurik's informants, meant for Yurik himself, but since Yurik was incapacitated at the moment, Peter goes in his place, under the codename The Spider. Upon arrival at the docks, Peter hides, watching as Craven and the Enforcers unload an expensive spider totem from a crate. This statue cost a small fortune, and is believed to be cursed, but also believed to contain a form of power, and since Osborne loves power, he had to have it. But in their haste to load the statue quickly, the Enforcers drop it, breaking the totem and releasing hundreds of spiders that quickly devour one of the Enforcers. Craven hoses the spiders down so that the other two Enforcers can recapture them and load them along with the broken totem back in the crate praying that Osborne doesn't kill them for their clumsiness. But one spider avoided recapture. It made its way up to the rafter where Peter was hiding and bit him, infecting him instantly. Peter passes out and enters a dreamlike state. There he is visited by a spider god, who says his spider bite only kills the wicked. But to the righteous, it passes on a different type of curse. Power. Peter awakens, now with the abilities of a spider. Strength, speed, agility, spider sense, and organic webs that fire from his wrists. Now he was no longer puny Parker. Peter could now be that someone who could stand up to Osborne and the corruption in New York City. Donning his Uncle Ben's old pilot outfit, a mask, and a gun, Peter Parker becomes the Spider-Man. And his war on power begins. I've waited a long time for this, Osborne. Tonight, your criminal empire ends. To find out what happens next, be sure to pick up the Spider-Man Noir Complete Collection in paperback form, and stay subscribed to this channel as we will discuss Peter Benjamin Parker's adventures in future videos. Leave your comments down below so we can have a discussion about this or other origin episodes. And if you have a friend that enjoys comics, feel free to recommend this channel as we continue our climb to 3,000 subscribers. I appreciate you watching and interacting. More videos to come soon. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace. Can you close off your feelings so you don't get crippled by the moral ambiguity of your violent actions?